Hi, this is Chris Cook with The Budget Guide, and today I'm excited to show you a bookkeeping spreadsheet that you could use for your own business. Okay, so here we have a bookkeeping spreadsheet for putting in inputs for your finances and then as well as seeing reports of what you spent money on and all the, all the certain types of reports for accounting purposes. And pretty much you could do everything here for free and you don't have to get a software but there is a little learning curve to be able to do it so that you can you have accurate books. Let me show you what I got here. So we got the date column, the place column where you put where you spent that money or where you got that money from, the amount, the you got the debit and credit accounting terms. You'll have to be a little familiar with to understand this and, and then as well as the description. So that's pretty much a notes column for you. What I did for this video's sake for privacy, I just pretty much threw all the descriptions and put it over in the place column so that it's for the privacy purposes. But anyway, so you can see at this, this is the beginning of the year, we new business just had debt and equity. But if it was an older business, you would have retained earnings and you, you would just put those as the initial inputs at the beginning of the year so that you have a balance. Because this essentially for a simple business is good for like one one bank account or two you could have multiple bank accounts, but it's easier with one bank account with this way of doing it. So that you can see the balance of the bank account and it should and you you'll be able to match that balance here and I'll, I'll show you a little more about that a little later so I'll scroll down to the bottom do an example input today's 11 4 so I'm gonna put that date in here I'm gonna say uh, mobile host I'm gonna spend a hundred dollars and that's a technology expense so I'm gonna do that here and getting rid of cash so for every single every so there's all these inputs I have the same inputs on the credit column as well. And for all these inputs, they are accounts where money is essentially. You have to think about it like that. And so all these accounts should balance out on both sides. So like for example, everything balances out and that's why there's a debit and a credit and each account may have different ways of acting. So for example, um, you're getting rid of cash you're going to have it in the credit column but if you're getting cash you're going to have it on the debit column so yeah let's say we we got some revenue we'll say 11.4 i got some commission from a carrier let's just say i got three thousand bucks and now i'm getting cash so i put that there and revenue is commission. It's the easiest way to think about it is it's just to remember cash. If you're just dealing with cash, that's it's the easiest way to to work with this and say, okay, if I'm subtracting cash, I'm putting it in the credit column. If I'm adding cash, I'm putting it in the debit column. That's that's how I, I do that. Let's go back to what I was talking about earlier about looking at the bank statement, making sure at the end of the month that everything balances out. I mean, you could do it weekly. I, I do it monthly. And what I have here is this little plus here to look at the bank reconciliation. And this actually drags down for each input. And what I do is because I'm able to see every single expense on my bank statement to see what the balance is. And I match it here with each expense and I make sure everything lines up so that Every, everything's good. You want to make sure everything is lined up for taxes and, and, and the government and yourself. You want to make sure things are accurate. So anyway, you can see now that this balance here matches this balance up here. And that, that just means the formulas are working uh, really because this is the formula to get to see the cash balance all of it and then this one just goes uh, similar formula but just line by line look just looking at the cash balances and I scroll up here what I do is I put in the amount that's on the bank statement here so the bank statement says ten thousand dollars now I'm gonna put ten thousand dollars here and I'm gonna notice oh my thing here says twelve thousand dollars okay 
$12,578.38 dollars. So I had to go back here and say, okay, why why does that not match? Why is my bank saying 10,000 and this is uh, 12,578 some change? Well, you can go back to different expenses on your bank account and just make sure that, okay, this is, it looks like right here it's lined up, but this is where the discrepancy comes in and then you could find out why, um, why to sell. It might just be because your bank statement's not all up to date yet. And so you could say, oh, it was $10,000 on this date. This one was just say, just for argument's sake, it's got, that was $10,000, okay. But this one's not in yet, that's fine. Oh, okay. and, then, and then you're good. You just wanna make sure that the bank statement amount is the same as as what you the cash amount you have in here i'll go to the report tab so right here the reports tab has all the statements uh, for finance that you want to see we have the different revenues that this business makes cost of sales which is pretty much just agents under the business that get the commission instead of the business itself but we are able to report all of it there and then give the rest of them and subtract the difference for gross profit. Then we have other expenses here, labor, supplies, marketing, R&D, technology, legal, and other. And then there's depreciation and taxes and interest you could put in as well as expenses. I'll just go down here. This is a simple graph showing the income versus revenue uh that income versus revenue looks like this uh <laughs> for some reason that's not linking to the revenue but yeah the blue is revenue in this graph i'll have to fix that this one shows marketing breakdown of different marketing things are being spent and this is actually not working right now because i had it based off the description column so the description column would have referrals in as the word in the description column and then this chart here just tracks that and based off the description column so now we have a couple other ones so this one's just expenses by month you can select the month here and this one's, yeah, this one is different main parts of the income statement by quarter. So you could see, okay, quarter two, we got revenue here. Some agents didn't have anything here, expenses that much. And yeah, our income's negative because our revenue's here and our expenses are there. So our net income would be negative. Idealistically, let's see what's third quarter looking at. Like, so yeah, we have revenue, sub agents, expenses, and net income. This pretty much makes up that difference there. Down here, we have the different, uh, those just the numbers making the charts and making the statements work. So you don't really have to worry about this except for this yellow box here. You wanna make this the current year. So let's say it's 2020 now. You just go one slash one, 20 uh, or 21, let's we'll say it's 2021, I mean, because this over here on the ledger, when you input something, if I say 11.5, it's gonna actually be 11.5, 2020. So it uses the current year and it's just easier and faster just to have me just put, make this manual change at the beginning of each year and or make a copy of this spreadsheet and make the manual change at the beginning of the, each year right here instead of having a formula try to figure that out for me i'm going to go back because if you notice before i make that change everything went blank because yeah i was tracking 2021 but all the inputs are 2020 so now i put that and everything's back we got the retained earnings statement so yeah again if you had retained earnings from each year so from the previous year you would put that as an input here but then you would also put it that number amount here and balance sheet yeah this business doesn't have that much and it looks like we don't have dividends either on the retained early statement but if you didn't have that and if you did have accounts payable equipment and other things here then this would just be pre-filled there and you could see how assets matches liabilities and so back to when i was saying everything balances out that's what the balance sheet's all about everything balances out depending on if something's a credit or or a debit and 
and then as well as this cash flow statement and we'll show you the actual cash that you have so if you notice this number here the 1257 or 12579 is also that 12579 here rounded up i guess on this uh, statement but it's it should match i will show you something else the to show you the example why I have why I have the debit and credit columns have everything on it uh, for the drop down so again yeah so if you noticed or I said earlier you have all the inputs here and you have the same inputs here and you're like why would you ha have everything twice well again it's just the way you need to balance things out so let's say i paid for this mobile hosting service on 11.4 and tomorrow let's we'll say it's tomorrow now and it's 11.5 and we're like we we don't need this this was a waste of money let's get our money back okay so Again, it's the same same place, but I'm getting my $100 back. Now I'm getting my $100 back, so I get the cash in the debit column, and the expense is a technology expense, so expense, uh, where's the technology one? Right there. And now if you see the cash statement on operating activities, we have $100 that we got. So this is a positive, the green's positive, and the and the red's negative so we got a hundred dollars here we got rid of a hundred dollars there so everything balances out we had three thousand dollars from that commission so you'll see the hundred dollars will balance out and it will just be that commission if i let's just get rid of that commission so you can see everything just balanced the zero all right so we got everything balanced the zero because you got your refund you don't have extra money but you still want to report that and you want to have receipts and stuff um, because that's uh, if the IRS asks for receipts, then then you can report everything accurately um, based off your cash flow. So I also have ratios over here. They're not really um, prevalent here, but you could definitely mess with that if you want. The index column is important because if you want to change inputs, uh, you could do it here. So all that that drop down list that I had. That's coming from here. So let's say you don't get revenue from commission, you get uh, revenue from services. You change this here. I'm gonna go over here. Just This is just um, hard coded in there. So you, you, just, uh, you just type it, it'll overwrite it like that. But now I have a bunch of things that are invalid because there's no more revenue commission it has to be services and if you notice it's not actually being tracked here anymore because the name was changed and so yeah this is revenue services now you're going to see one thing over here revenue services i'm just going to undo those changes so that um, we can show a different example. So let's say we wanted to add an expense or we wanted to add revenue. I'll just show an expense. Let's say we pay rent. We wanna add that expense, obviously. I'm gonna just copy this down because um, the debits and credits act the same for expenses. I would do the same thing. If it was a revenue, I would just copy that down and so on for, you'll, you'll notice there's different categories that act the same and you'll just want to copy it down uh, the only thing that's a little weird is the uh, equity dividends uh, that's the only one that goes against the other equity but that's everything else should be the same for simple accounting rent well our this R&D is rent now so now this is uh will be not too more difficult but yeah you you'll want to add the rent here and I have a lot, I have this thing merged, uh, so you, I have to unmerge that. But anyway, so let's say the rent's right under here. So I wanna make sure that's right under here on this income statement too. So rent, putting in rent, I'm gonna copy this down. We want it the exact, that formula is the same formula for rent. Same thing with commission and the other categories, it would be the same formula. I didn't want to add a column 
if you notice, I didn't add a column because I didn't want to have a huge space here. The only reason there's a huge space there now is because this expenses. I need to merge it again. So I merge it and uh, yeah, you see there's no extra. If I would have added a row and it would have uh, added something there, which we wouldn't want that. But you could definitely fix that pretty easily. Uh, the other thing for the, just for the chart sake, I want to add it down here. So I'm going to put in 12 rent. Copy the formula down. I'll actually copy the formula down like that. And I'm going to copy this sequence of numbers down like that. So now this will be accurate here for that one chart we have about expenses. And now I'm just going to show you one example of paying rent. So we got pay rent. That's 11.5. We'll say we're paying, we're paying MP Dodge. We're paying them uh, $980 for having our small office that we have. Um, so I'm going to say expense, or you could start even just typing in rent, and there it is. I have, I'm spending cash, and you could make a note here, like, if you didn't have rent as the expense, you might want to just throw it there, like, maybe you have utilities as the expense, and you would say it's electric utilities, or for example. When I go back to the income statement, you'll see, okay, we got rent $980 on November, and it just goes across all the, all the different reports. And yeah, there you go. This is a spreadsheet again for you. Uh, you could, you'll be able to use it yourself and you'll be able to see how to manage bookkeeping without having to pay a lot of money for some software. And it's not too difficult. I mean, again, there's a few things, but if you do a little Googling, you should be able to figure it out. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and let me know if there's anything else you wanna learn about finance. Also remember that I am not a financial advisor and that you should look at my financial disclaimer in the description below. You have a good week. Bye.